Hi. Now, in this series of videos, I'm looking at solving a system of three linear simultaneous equations. And they have the form ax plus by plus cz equals d, where a, b, c and d are constants. You should already be aware that this represents a plane where a, b and c are the components of a vector which is normal to the plane. Now in order to help understand all the different types of solutions possible for such cases, it helps to be familiar with the various configurations of three planes, which I showed you in the previous video in this series. If you're not watching this on my website, then there's a link in the description below the video. So in this video, I want to introduce you to the first case scenario where we have three linear simultaneous equations which represent parallel planes. Whenever faced with a question, it's always best to check for this as it can save a lot of time and unnecessary calculations. So how do I know that they're parallel? Well, we look at the values of A, B and C when expressed in this form and check to see if all of the equations are multiples of these values, as in this example, you'll see. If we take the three, the two and the negative four from this equation, can you see that if we double them, we get the six, the four and the minus eight. Three twos are six, two twos are four, and minus four times two is minus eight. So I can see that these two planes are parallel, and for the third equation, the third plane, I can see that if I multiply the three, the two, and the negative four by three, I'm going to get the coefficients of x, y, and z in this equation here, the nine, the six, and the minus 12. Notice, by the way, that these values on the end, the constant d, doubling the 2 does not give me the 3, and multiplying the 2 with 3 doesn't give me 5. So what this represents are three different planes. However, they are all parallel. So if we had, say, the first plane, pi 1, then the second plane would be pi 2, and the third plane would be pi 3. They all share a multiple of that normal vector 3, 2, negative 4, which I've taken from here. So what we've got then are three parallel non-coincident planes. And if we were looking for finding a solution to these three equations, a point or a set of points that lie on all three planes, well clearly there's not going to be a solution. We say that this system of equations is inconsistent. There is no solution. So hopefully you can see that just by looking at these equations and looking to see if there's any multiples of the coefficients a, b and c, then this would save us an awful lot of time in trying to use substitution methods to solve these equations. Okay, let's have a look at another type of question. Suppose I take the same equation for pi 1 and pi 3 as we had in this example up here. So already we've seen from above that pi 1 and pi 3, those two planes there, are going to be parallel and non-coincident because I can take the values 3, 2, negative 4, multiply these by 3 and I get the 9, the 6 and the minus 12. But notice how in this example, how if I take the, the 3, the 2 and the negative 4 and also the 2 by multiplying this time by 2, can you see that I get the 6, the 4, and the minus 8, as we did up here? But this time, 2 times 2 gives us that 4. So what I've got here is essentially 
the same plane. Pi 1 and Pi 2 are the same planes. So if I was to draw that on, I'm drawing it on like this. I'm just putting it on top of it. And by the way, remember that these planes go infinitely out in all directions. So when it comes to trying to find a solution set for this set of equations, well, there's going to be no point that lies on all three. So we've got two coincident planes and the other one is parallel. And we've got an inconsistent set of simultaneous equations where we have no solution. OK, well, you might have guessed the third scenario when it comes to parallel planes, and that is when you're asked to solve, say, this set of linear equations, you'll notice I've copied down pi 1 and pi 2 again, where I have doubled each of the values of a, b, and c to give me 6, 4, minus 8. And also, when I double the 2 here, I get the 4. So we've already seen that when it comes to pi 1 and pi 2, they're basically the same plane. But when I look at this equation here, pi 3, notice how I can take the 3, 2, negative 4, and the 2. And if I multiply those values by 3, I get this equation down here. So clearly, this is exactly the same plane. By multiplying by 3, I generate another plane, which is coincident with the other two planes. So I've got three coincident planes. And when it comes to finding a point or a set of points that satisfy these three equations, well, there's going to be a set of points. So we say that we have a consistent solution for this system of three simultaneous equations. Mind you, there's going to be not one solution, but an infinite number of solutions. Now, to demonstrate just a couple of solutions that would work for these simultaneous equations, let's say I take x to be, say, 0. OK, let's put 0 there. And we have to take another value for, say, y. Let's say that one's 0. And then I can see that if I substitute it into here, I end up with minus 4z equals 2. So clearly, z would have to be negative a half, negative 0.5. So there's one solution. And that would work for each of these. Let's suppose we take another value for x. Say we take x is 2. And let's suppose we take y to be 1. Remember, all you need to do is take any two values, whether it be x, y, or z, and then find out the third value. So if I substitute 2 in for x into this first equation, you're going to get 6 here, plus another 2, that's 8. So all I need to do is let z equal 1.5, and then I'll end up taking 6 off of the 8, giving me the 2. So z would be equal to 1.5. OK, now there's going to be an infinite number of solutions, but I leave it up to you just to try out, if you wish, finding out some other solutions. OK, now I've got a short exercise here. I've got five planes, and what I want you to do is just discuss the nature of these planes. Tell me which ones of these planes are parallel and coincident. OK? So I'll just give you a few moments to pause the video, and then when you come back, I'll quickly run through the answers. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. So here's the answers. You should have found that all the planes were parallel except for pi 4. I put this in as a trick question, actually. You'll notice that I tried to give this illusion straight away that if you multiplied all of these values by 2, you'd get pi 4. But 
check out minus 4 times 2 doesn't give plus 8 but negative 8. So pi 4 is not a parallel plane. All the rest though, you can multiply the a, b and c by a number and you'll find you'll get the other planes. Like for instance with pi 1 to pi 2, just multiply by 4. And pi 1 to pi 3, well that's multiplying through by 1 and a half. And pi 1 to pi 5, well that's going to be multiplying through by 3. But you'll notice that in the case of pi 1 and pi 5, if you multiply the 5 by 3, you'll get the 15, which means that those two planes are coincident planes. OK, well, that brings us to the end of this video. So I hope it's been of use to you in checking out when you've got a system of three simultaneous linear equations. Check out, first of all, whether any of the planes are parallel. OK, well, in the next video, what I want to be doing is extending this further. I'll be looking at solving, again, three simultaneous linear equations where we use substitution methods to find the solution. So hopefully I'll see you again in that video. OK, so don't forget to like this video if you found it of some use. And also, you'll see a subscription link coming up for my YouTube channel. It'd be great if you do subscribe. So bye for now. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video.